Good morning. Happy Sunday, Saints. Good morning. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Good morning. Good morning. Like the old saints used to say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There we go. Amen. Amen. Um, welcome. Welcome to those who are in the sanctuary, those who are on their way, those who are tuning in online today or another day to the Lighthouse on the Pike here in District Heights, Maryland. Our mission is to study, serve, grow. Say that. Study, serve, grow. Amen. We study to show ourselves approved to God. We serve our community as well as one another, and we grow the kingdom of God through discipleship. That's a good mission, I think, to get behind. So we're just grateful um, to be in the sanctuary today. I wanted to read uh, a passage this morning out of Matthew. Um, I've been in Matthew um, this week just kind of studying the words of Christ. I think you can never go wrong in doing that. Um, so turn with me if you have your Bibles or if you just prefer to listen. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. I'm just going to read verses 21 through 23. Matthew 7, verse 21 through 23. And the word of the Lord says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? and cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. You know, this feels probably like a harsh scripture, but I think for me, I think each day I just feel more closer to that day. I just feel like the Lord is coming back. We don't know when he's coming back, and maybe we won't be here when he comes back. But at the end of the day, as Christians, we don't live for today. We don't live for the present. We live for eternity. We live for that moment when Christ will come back. And so in light of that, we should always be ready. Because we don't know when that day, right, that the, the, the scripture says that day, we don't know when that day will come. Our works won't matter. What we say about God or Christ won't matter. What we post on our Instagram, it won't matter. The scripture says what will matter is if we do the will of the Father. Not our will, not the word, the world's will, not the government's will, not our, our company's will, none of that. It's when we do the will of the Father that makes us children of God. So let us just live in light of the cross. Let us live in light of tomorrow. Let us live in light of that day that will surely come. Just as you know your first and last name, you can bet that that day will come. So let us just make sure that we are ready. Amen. What they say, if you don't, you ain't got to get ready if you just stay ready. So let's just stay ready for that day. Okay. Amen. Amen. So before we go into worship, let's just pray that the Lord bless our time together. Amen. Most gracious God, holy and wise God, we give you thanks because you're worthy. You've done so much for us. The list goes on and on, Lord God, but we just want to take a moment just to acknowledge you and thank you for who you are. You are a good father. You are a comforter. You are a provider. You are our keeper. And for that, we say thank you, oh Lord. We thank you for allowing us to get through another week. Everything that we had to get through to see this day, we thank you for giving us the ability to do so, Lord God. We thank you that we are able to freely come into the house of God to give your name praise, Lord God. So give us a joy in our heart just for that simple thing that we're able to do worship on a Sunday with our brothers and sisters in Christ. So bless this time together. Bless our pastor, Pastor Wardlow, what you have put on his heart and his mind. May it just flow freely from his heart and from his mouth and allow our hearts and our ears to receive what it is you have to say. We thank you, we praise you, and we love you, and it's these things that we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Mr. Lucy. Hallelujah. We 
Bless your name, God. We lift the Lord's name on high today. There is nothing like our God. Hallelujah. So, so worthy of praise and glory, God. Hallelujah. We lift your name up, God. There is none like you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we lift your name. None like you, Lord. like our God and our King. Hallelujah. We thank you, thank you, thank you, God, for, come, for coming from heaven to earth just to show us the way, Father. Thank you, Father. You are worthy, worthy of all praise and glory, Father. We love you, Father. There is none like you, Jesus, none like you anywhere, Father. We worship and adore you, Lord Jesus. We want to take this time just to tell you we love you, God, that we adore you, Father. There is nothing and no one that could have done the things that you've done, Lord God. Hallelujah. Yes, I do. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God. God alone, because of you my cloudy days are gone, I can sing to you this song, 
I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you. of you my cloudy days are gone I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything thank you God I love you Jesus I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. We give you all the glory. We We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be. I love you, Jesus. I worship and Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just 
just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I give you Thank you, Lord. I worship and adore you, Father, yes. There's none like you. Lord, I love you more. Lord, I love you more than it. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore, I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. and adore, I worship and adore you, I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything, we give you all, we give you We give you all the glory. We give you all because you're worthy. We give you all the glory. We worship. We Hallelujah, God. We give you all praise and glory, Father. Hallelujah. There is none like you, Lord. None can compare to you, Father. None like you, God. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips. Tell him how awesome he is. There is none like you, Lord. No one can do the things that you've done, Father. And we thank you, Father. We praise you with grateful hearts, God. Thank you, Father, just for being who you are, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. None like I can search through all. Yes, Lord. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search.
search through eternity. I can search for all eternity long. And find that there is none. That there is none. There is none. Is that your testimony on this morning? Some of y'all tease me that I'm old. I might be older than a couple of you. <laughs> and I jokingly say that, but on a, on a more serious note, I've only, I've only lived on this earth some 48 years. Some of you may ha have me by a few years. Some of you may be short a few years, but here's what we believe as, as, as believers in Christ, um, that life does not stop um, in the space of time that we know life to be. By being believers in Christ, um, we believe that we're going to be with him, that we're going to live for eternity. That's one of those things that Christ redeemed on the cross, that we will be with him for eternity. So just in 48 short years of eternity I have no idea my imagination doesn't even allow me to think that far I can just I don't know what eternity looks like I say all of that to say that Miss Marjorie in my little 48 48 years here on this earth um, I've experienced a lot what I would assume is for me um, but in my 21 years of being saved here's what I discovered both now and in the past I've had not a, an experience that's even close to, it's not, it's not even close to the experience that I've had with the Lord Jesus. Amen. That's my testimony. I don't know if, I don't know, maybe some of you have found something or someone or somewhere that matches his love, but for me, I've searched and I've searched and I've searched. I've even tried to go back, you know, post the Christ. And even then, I find that there's not a thing, not a person, not a single piece of creation that has outmatched the love and the care and the comfort that I've discovered in the Lord Jesus. Amen. King David says that I was young, and now that I'm old, I've never seen, watch this, the righteous forsaken. And we can say amen to that because we know that we have no righteousness of our own. Uh, the righteousness that we have has been imputed to us by Jesus Christ on the cross, which means that I had never been forsaken and I don't even deserve the Lord's mercy. I don't even deserve his goodness. Y'all looking at me. I'm saying this is my testimony, but somebody should be thanking him because David says that I've never seen the righteous forsaken for his seed, that means that we're his children begging for anything. For the Bible tells us that he's given us all things. Come on, y'all making me preach too hard. That he's given us all things. He's given us all things that's pertaining to both life and godliness. So before we go any further, before we, I don't want us just to go through the motions because this is the time. Uh, this is that space and time of what we do in service. If I don't say another word, I just preach the whole message, and that is that God is good. <laughs> and his mercy endures forever. The Lord's mercy surpasses time. The Lord's mercy surpasses space. The Lord's mercy surpasses and is greater than any thing that you've ever, that you and I have ever faced in our life. And for that, we give them praise on this morning. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Lift your hands with a loud voice. Say something to them. Say something to them. The book of Revelations tells us that they overcame 
Not only by the blood of the lamb, but by the witness of their testimony. Don't you ever, I don't care what you may face in life, don't you let, ever let any situation, any mood, any feeling silence your testimony. Because Jesus has already done his part. He died on the cross. He died on the cross. Our part is that we are to continuously give our testimony about him dying on the cross. Amen. 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 Y'all ain't with me. Look to your left. Look to your right. Look behind you. Give someone a great big good morning and a God bless you. Now turn around and look at somebody else, somebody else that you don't know. Make sure that they make eye contact with you. Give them a great big good morning and a God bless you. You all may take your seats. Thank you this morning for those of you who are tuning in at home, for those of you who are here with us for our first time visitors, whoever you may be, uh, we thank you. Happy Sunday to you and welcome here to the Lighthouse on the Pike Church. If you will, why don't you go ahead and meet me at the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John. Today we're going to be picking up where we left off on last week, uh, chapter 21, um, but we're going to cover verses 15 and through 19. 15 through 19, we will be looking at today the Gospel of John. Before we get in our word today, um, I solicit you to um, keep Charlie in your prayers. Charlie um, has not been feeling well, and actually he was hospitalized for a few days. Um, so um, please keep Charlie. You, know, you all know Charlie drives here from St. Mary's County when, he, when, when he's here. Um, so please keep Charlie in your prayers. And then also, uh, please keep Brother Ben in your prayers. Now, some of you all, most of you all probably don't know who Ben is, not Pastor Ben. Uh, but Ben is a friend of the ministry. Uh, he's actually um, uh, CJ and Debbie's neighbor, but he, he, he does support you all. He supports this church as well. He's come in and did some repairs. He installed these lights and the lights in the classroom, and he doesn't charge us a thing wants to do it um, out of the kindness of his heart but please keep him and his family in prayer I believe his daughter um, is experiencing some illnesses so if you all can just um, lift them up in your prayers on this week and then I don't know did, did, are you all's noses working this morning y'all smell that <laughs> y'all smell that man the kitchen works downstairs did y'all believe that <laughs> the kitchen works downstairs something that we have not been able to really put into utilization um, since we've been here we may have used it a couple of times uh, for some repasses uh, that someone uh, came here so um, it got that old church smell you got service and you're not even you having service and can't even focus on a pastor uh, because your stomachs is growling well you all have three people to thank for that um, uh, Travis uh, our, our chef Travis um, amen <laughs> Uh, Travis, along with Sheldon and uh, another friend of the ministry, uh, Sheldon's uh, friend, Sean, um, they came together um, and uh, Sheldon and him and Travis had asked me about it some time ago and I gave you all some misinformation on Thursday. Uh, so uh, I say all of that to say that they wanted to come together to prepare a meal uh, for you all and that's what you all smell now it, it is a surprise so I don't know fully what was going on I thought I did we're, going to, we're not having Mediterranean food um, but I say all of that to say uh, man them brothers they got together they came together they did it all on their own let's give God some praise um, for them and I just asked that after service that we all just make our way to the classroom um, next door the brothers are at work um, and I just love to see um, that they want to, they did it out of the kindness of their hearts that they wanted to come together and let allow us to fellowship um, as well and also what we're going to do I'm just going to add to it I mean they already did all the work but we're going to you know while we're around the table and, and, and we have dinner as well amen for I know do it on first Sunday no Jesus said do this as often <laughs> do this as often whenever you think about the work of my broken body and my I do this I just personally believe that we should practice in our homes, not just at church, that when we're around the table with family, around the table with friends, man, what a, what a better, what, you can't find a better time than to share the gospel when Jesus 
when the inst- what we call uh, communion. He did it at the table with his disciples. And I just think that there's just something a little bit more intimate to that. Um, so immediately following service, um, we're going to go next door if you all can and stay. And we're going to have a meal um, with one another. Amen? Amen. Amen. Do you all got your Bibles, tablets, um, whatever it is that you may be reading? Um, again, I am reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 21. And this morning, we're going to look at verses 15 through 19. And I am reading from the English Standard Version. And the Bible reads, when they had finished breakfast. Here's Jesus having a meal with the disciples again. When they had finished breakfast, uh, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then he said to him, feed my lambs. Verse 16, he said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he being Peter said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love him, love you. And he said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show what kind of death he was going to glorify God. After saying this, he said to him, follow me. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for today. For today, this, we, your people, we are the day that you have made. Therefore, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. But Lord, there's nothing that we can give you or express our gratitude more than the fact that uh, while we were yet enemies of you, you sent your only begotten son to die for us. Lord, it was always in your plan that you would reconcile us to you. And Lord, we're grateful for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we thank you for your protection. We thank you for keeping us. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Lord, you thank you for making us able to even come here and gather as a community with one another. Lord, we thank you for all your provisions that you made for us in the past. Lord, we thank you for everything that you're going to do in the days to come. Lord, on this morning, we thank you for your spirit, and we just ask that by your spirit, Lord, that you would illuminate your word um, within us. Lord, that you would work the grounds of our hearts and allow it to allow your word to take growth in us. And as always, Lord, I ask that you would help me speak with clarity on this morning and that you would teach us all to continue to be doers of your word and not just hearers alone. So, Father, we thank you and we bless you. And we ask these things in the name of our Lord, your son, Jesus Christ. And the people of God should say amen. I'd like to draw your attention to the two last words in verse 19, and that is, follow me. And I like to tag this morning's message as unresolved issues. Unresolved issues. Uh, Does anyone remember a time when you had an unresolved issue with someone that you care about? Uh, How did that make you feel? Uh, Better question. Does anyone remember a time when you had an unresolved issue with someone that you care about with whom you did something wrong to? And not only do you see this person, you're forced to be in the same space with that person. How does that make you feel? And then I have one last question for you all. Is there anybody here that remembers a time when you had an unresolved issue with someone that you care about and 
they are the one that wronged you. And not only do you see this person, but you're forced to be in the same space with that person. Um, how does that make you feel? Um, that feeling that you feel uh, right now, thinking back on that moment or moments, might just help you connect with the tension in today's context. Uh, Dr. Philip Pointer, uh, pastor of the St. Mark Church in Little Rock, Arkansas, and uh, mentor in my D-Men program, he always starts his messages, and more just recently, with these two words, um, that context matters. Context matters. Uh, pastor G, what are you talking about? Because this is... Um, our text today, it picks up where uh, we left off last week um, with Jesus and this third appearance to his disciples after the resurrection. In our text today, it has been at least, according to John chapter 20, verse 26, it has been at least eight days since the resurrection. And also according to 21 and 14, that this is the third time that Jesus has revealed himself to the disciples. Um, the last time they, being Peter and Jesus, talked can be found way back in chapter 13. If they, if, if they, I'll, I'll say that again. That we're in chapter 21 today. But the last time that Peter has had a physical word, mouth-for-mouth -mouth conversation with Jesus is way back in chapter 13. And then the final conversation, a nonverbal conversation that Peter and Jesus had, was in verse 18. Peter and Jesus, the text seems to suggest, have some unresolved issues. Now, after Jesus tells his disciples back in chapter 13, he says, them, he says this to them. Context matters. He says, little children, yet in a little while, I, while I'm with you, he said that you will seek me, and just like I said to the Jews, I now say to you that where I am going, you cannot come. Um, our friend Peter here, he asked the Lord, I like Peter, um, because Peter is the one that's willing to uh, stick his foot in his mouth most often, if you will. Um, Peter often says what the rest of the disciples are thinking. Peter often says or asks Jesus the question that you and I are often thinking. Uh, G Peter says to Jesus, he says, well, Lord, where are you going? <laughs> I think that that's a relevant question. When Jesus tells Peter that where I am going, you cannot follow me, but you will follow me afterwards. And Peter replies, watch this, that, Lord, why can't I follow you right now? Uh, he says that I will lay down my life for you. How many of you sound like Peter? Where we ask Jesus questions. We pray to God and we ask uh, the Lord questions. And when the Lord may tell us no, we insist that we're ready for the thing that it is that we're asking for. Um, Peter tells Jesus, watch this, Lord, why can't I follow you right now? <laughs> you would think that Jesus saying that, you cannot go where I'm going, but you will afterwards would be enough for Peter. But Peter is like, no, not only um, do I want to know why can't I go with you right now, he says that I will lay my life down for you. Be careful what it is that you promise God that it is that you're going to do. Now, I'd like to take this even a little bit further because I am an advocate of be very careful of saying what you will and will not do when you're not in that situation. It's easy to say what it is that you will and will not do when you're not in that situation. It's easy to look down your nose at other people about situations that you have never faced. It's easy to make promises about things that you do not know whether or not you can uphold your end of the bargain. I thank God for Jesus, our Lord, because he knows when we make promises to him that we can't uphold our end of the bargain. Listen to what Jesus tells Peter. Jesus asks Peter a rhetorical question. He says, Peter, um, will you lay down your life for me? For truly, truly, I say to you, 
that the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. And you can find that in chapter 13, verse 38. But then it's in chapter 18. It's in chapter 18 that Peter does just as Jesus foretold. Peter denies him three times. And likewise, just as Jesus foretold, the rooster crowed. Luke, in his gospel in chapter 22 and verse 60, he gives us a little bit more context to this conversation. Luke tells us that just as Peter was talking or as Peter was denying him, the rooster crowed. And watch this. And right at that moment, the Lord turned around and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying that Jesus had told him that you will deny me three times. And the Bible says that Peter went and wept bitterly. Um, this eye contact shared between Peter and his soon-to-be sentenced-to-death master would be the last shared conversation between the two of them until now. I'll say that again. The last conversation that Peter had with Jesus was mere silence and just eye contact, and Peter remembered the very thing that the Lord had told him before he went to the cross. I don't know about you, but there are times that I have fallen short on my promises that I've made to the Lord. I don't know about you. There are times, um, I can just call it for what it is, that I've just outright sinned. There are times that I have made choices that was contrary to what the Lord, to what the word of the Lord says. There are times that I have been convicted by things and I have made uh, dedications to the Lord. Um, God, if you get me out of this, don't leave me by myself. Uh, don't leave me by myself. Thank you, thank you, TJ. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Chuck. That, Lord, if you get me out of this, I will, watch this, I put a time stamp on it, I will never do it again until the next time. But in me making that declaration, as I look back over my 21 years, this, this little short time of me being saved, now that I look back at it, I can hear the Lord saying to me, son, are you really going to give that up for me? Uh, son, Peter, are you really going to lay down your life for me? Uh, son, Peter, Greg, you can put your name in there. Are you really going to never do this again? As a matter of fact, I can remember very vividly, there are times that I've fallen short and done the exact thing that I told God that I was never going to do again. Watch this. And I walked outside to go to wherever I was going, and I looked up in the sky because it was as if I had that eye contact with Jesus just like Peter did, where I remembered the commitment that I said that I will never do this again just to find myself in the same position all over again. Now, I remember the space of silence where I began to weep bitterly because I felt so convicted that I was not able to uphold my end of the promise. I, 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 I remember that there would be a space of time that seemed so long before within myself that I could hear the word of the Lord speak to me again. There were times where not only was I convicted, but I also felt ashamed that I didn't even want to read my word anymore. There were, were times that I did things, Lauren, that I disappeared from church. It started off a week, just one Sunday, and then it became every other Sunday, and then it became every other month that I'm, just, I'm not making this up, you all. I walked away from the Lord for a period of two years, two years. Because I was disappointed, I was heartbroken, I was frustrated. I, I, I came to the idea that maybe this particular Christian thing isn't for me. As a matter of fact, just in reverence, reverence to our context on last week, I just went back fishing. Adrian, 
I went back to those places. I went back to those same people um, that I had made this declaration that, hey, I can't hang out with y'all anymore. I went back to those same people that it was a joke, it was the running joke, hey, Greg, go to church now. I went back to those same people and I just completely killed my witness. And then one day, sitting in my apartment right around the corner, as a matter of fact, the Lord showed up. Somebody, I thought somebody would be happy about that. Because just like me, just like Peter, the Lord knowing where you are, the Lord knowing where we are, he promised that he will never leave us. Somebody needs to hear that. That he will never leave us. And not only will he never leave us, he promises us, he guarantees us that he will never forsake us. As a matter of fact, there is a text in the Bible that tells us that I am married to the backslider. I am still united with the one that has turned away from me. I thank God for Jesus that our salvation is not predicated upon our actions or our thoughts or our promises. Y'all making me work real hard up here. I, I, I am thankful that our salvation is guaranteed. There's nothing that you can do to separate you from the love of God, is, 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 is what the Bible tells us. And which brings us to our context on today that after uh, Jesus is on the seashore, after Peter and the boys have gone out fishing all night, they've returned back to their old lifestyle. We talked about it last week that they came up with absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, they had went right back to the exact same place where they were, where the Lord met them the first time. Um, Jesus tells them to bring some of the fish, and he cooks it for them, and it picks up right here in our text today. And it says right here in verse 15 that when they had finished breakfast, watch this. Peter and Jesus had been in the same space already. This is the third time that Jesus has appeared. How is it? How is it that we as believers can sit in the same room with one another, knowing that we have an issue with one another. How is it, Sean, that I can see you three times? Remember, I'm the one that has done something wrong to you. How is it that I can see you three times? I can be in your space multiple times and can't get past my pride to come to you and say something to you. Peter has now been in the presence of the Lord three times. The same amount of times that he denied them. And look at our Lord. I'm thankful that Jesus does not think like we think. Because this time, uh, Peter, Jeter comes to Peter and watch this. Jesus said to Simon Peter, uh, do you love me more than these? Commentators tell us that uh, Jesus could be addressing Peter in one of two, uh, about one or two uh, 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 situations. It could be that Jesus is asking Peter Sheldon, do you love me? Remember the Bible just told us that they had this miraculous catch of fish, some 153 of them, so much so that they needed help bringing the net in. Jesus could be asking Peter, um, do you love fishing more than you love me? In other words, do you love your former life? Uh, do you love the very thing that I delivered you from. Um, do you love your old habits? Do you love the places that you used to hang out with? Or better question, do you love sin more than you love me? Uh, do you love yourself uh, more than you love re me? Remember, Peter said that I will lay down my life for you. We've made that same declaration that, Lord, that we give you all the glory. We worship you, O oh Lord. You are worthy to be praised. I searched all over and found no other. I give myself away. We make those declarations. Jesus could be asking Peter. He could asking us the same question. Do you really love your former way of living? Do you really love darkness when you did not understand? Do you really love these things? more than you love me. Um, that, 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 that's one particular view of what Jesus could be saying to Peter. 
But I like it because I think it's very relevant. I think the word speaks to us today because we all have the propensity to turn back to our old ways. And, and, and if you're the one that's telling me, well, I don't do that anymore, trust me, I'm not after those token sins that we just tend to name, well, I don't do this, check, I don't do this, and I don't do that, check. But how is it that we still harbor hatred and meanness toward one another? Are we really lovers of our brothers? Jesus says that I give you a new command um, to not only are you to love God with your whole heart, your soul, and your mind, but he says now love your neighbors just as you would the same. Are we treating each other? Are we being a neighbor to one another? Or do you still love your old ways that I feel better to stay mad at you? I'm not going to be the one that's going to be humble today. I wish, I wish that I was just standing up here um, just giving you all a fictitious story because I hold this same type of anger in my heart today just by a situation that happened this week. So I'm not just talking to you. The text is talking to me. And the Lord speaks to us through his word. His spirit still brings these pages to life. And the question still stands, do you love these? Do you love you, Peter, Greg? You put your name in it. It sounds rhetorical, but it demands an answer. Do you love these things more than you love me? You're the only one that can answer that question. Uh, but according to the text, context matters. matters. Listen to, 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 to what Peter answers. Peter, it's like you and I, I would think uh, that our answer, Lauren, is, yes, Lord, you know <laughs> that I love you. If, if, if God's if God is speaking to your heart today and he's asking you, do you love him? I'm sure that we all give the exact same response as Peter does. Yes, Lord, I love you. I failed to mention here, watch Jesus. Um, we do remember that Jesus has now given Simon a new name. See, Simon was... Peter's given name by his father. Hence, Jesus says, calls him, he gives him, he calls him by his full government name, Simon Bar John or Jonah, Simon, son of John. He, he identifies, watch this, he identifies Peter back in the state where he met him. Uh, he, he didn't address him as Petras, which is Peter. He addresses him, Simon, son of John. The Lord knows your name. The Lord knows who you are. The Lord knows where you are. And because you, we, me, I, us, have the propensity to turn back into those same places, he has to go backwards and call us the very same thing that he delivered us from. Uh, he calls him Simon, uh, son of John. Um, do you love me? Peter responds, I'm taking my time. I'm almost done, though. I'm hungry. <laughs> do, 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 you love, do, do, you, do you love food more than you love me? He calls him Simon, son of John. Do you love these more than me? That's the first, that's the first view that he, it, it's, it's Jesus referring to Simon's old occupation. Simon's old way of life. Simon's old way of doing things. Do you, do, do you hold more value to that than you do of me? For where a man's heart is, there's treasures will be also. Um, he says, Peter, Simon, says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Watch this. The first command that Jesus gives to Peter is feed my lambs. Verse 16 Jesus says to him a second time, he addresses him by the same name, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He asks him the same question. Peter responds to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. 
Jesus tells him something very similar. He says, well, tend to my sheep. And then the third time, he says to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And watch this. It finally sunk in. Uh, the Bible tells us that when Jesus asked Peter the question the third time, the first two times, Peter just blotted, blotted out an answer. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. The third time, it finally sunk in, and Peter was grieved that the Lord would ask him this question for a third time, do you love me? It's oftentimes problematic when the Lord has to repeat himself to us. And if the Lord has to repeat himself to us, it's probably because we've done something repeatedly. Like I said that I was never going to do this again. And then I did it. <laughs> and then the Lord forgave me and I did it again. <laughs> Lord, I promise this time, I promise this time. And then I found myself in the exact same situation. See, I don't think that Jesus ever doubted that Peter loved him. And likewise, I don't believe that the Lord doubts, well, it's only for him to judge, that those of us who say that we love him, love him either. I do understand that our ability to love him the way that he loves us because of our humanness and because of our sinful nature has been somewhat prohibited for us to carry out the love in which the same manner that he's given us. I, I, I wholeheartedly believe for those who are true to their calling, for those who are true uh, to their love and their expression and their adoration to God, that there is a limit or we still have things that blocks us from giving ourselves totally to him like he has for us. Well, I'm here today to tell you what that limit is. Take your finger and point back at yourself. Because what we see here is Peter, uh, Jesus repeats this question three times because it, Peter has denied him three times. Uh, it was Jesus that told Peter that you're going to deny me three times. And what we see here is that Jesus is reestablishing Peter, and he has to do this for Peter. And it's the third time, just like it was the third time where Peter made eye contact with Jesus and realized that he had broken his heart. Well, now, right now, Jesus is making that same con eye contact with Peter, and he's restoring him. Pastor G, what's your point? That there is absolutely nothing that you can do there's not a many of times that you can do it that will prevent the Lord from coming and restoring you from wherever it is that you may find yourself at. I, 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 I thought that was something good. Uh, because sometimes, sometimes, man ago, I think that I'm capable of doing something or that I've done something, that this was that final straw and God ain't going to come back and get me. Not that I'm going to lose my salvation, uh, but that the Lord won't restore me, that the Lord won't allow me to do what it is that he's called me to do. And this is where we found Peter today. This is where most of us live. All of the time where we've gone back fishing. Because it's been a long time since the last time that I've had a conversation with him. And the last time I had a conversation with him, I made promises to him that I couldn't uphold. So in the meantime, I'll continue to go through the motions and I'll do all of the church stuff. I'll say all of the church things, but there are some unresolved issues that I have in my heart. And I honestly feel this separation between me and the Lord. And because I have this separation in my heart between me and the Lord, it causes some space and separation between you and I. And I thank God that Jesus comes back to Peter today, and he restores Peter. He asks Peter a question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter says, yes. Simon, son of John, do you love me? He says, yes. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Jesus' response to him is, well, feed my sheep, 
tend to my sheep, feed my sheep. And now Peter expresses his feeling. Peter is grieved because he asks him this question three times. And Peter responds to Jesus, for Jesus knows, our Lord knows everything. Lord, you know everything. You already know that I love you. Jesus gives him the same response, um, feed my sheep. Um, for Peter, is tend to the flock of Christ. For you and I today, here's what the word is saying, here's what the Lord is saying to us, get back to doing what it is that I've called you to do. I'm on this side uh, over here, I'll just talk to y'all, and on this side over here, thought that it was good. Um, for Peter, for Peter, uh, the Lord is saying, Miss Sheila, um, well, if you love me more than these, more than this occupation that you have, more than this place uh, that I've called you from, if in fact, because I think I left out the second view, was this, do you love me more than the rest of these disciples? Uh, because Peter, remember, had told Jesus that if everybody else leave you, I'm going to be here. Talani, uh, I, I have this, I, I'll admit to you, the microphone ain't on, so I'll just, I'll tell you this. Now, if you, if anybody else come back to me with this, I know that you told them. Because I'm going to say this to you in, in confidence. See, Talani, um, I have this, uh, I have this alter ego sometimes that I believe that I'm Jesus' super disciple. <laughs> True story. Had it for quite some time. I've done works in the ministry wearing the badge and would proudly proclaim it that I would do the work of 10 other men. There was nobody that was going to outwork me in my church. Why? Because I love Jesus more than they do. There was nobody that was going to be there, rain, sleet, or shine, before or after me because I love Jesus more than they do. Everybody else could turn away. Everybody else could be sinful, but not me. Because I have this superman complex that I'm Jesus' super disciple. And oftentimes, the Lord allows me to move in my own folly. Because what, because what it does is, in my superman disciple way of thinking, I oftentimes, Miss Debbie, began to depend on myself instead of depending on him. And my righteousness is like that filthy rags. So oftentimes, because my righteousness, which is a term that's called self-righteousness, because remember, there's no righteousness within us on our own. He imputes his righteousness upon us. But when I start depending on my righteousness, uh, my righteousness causes me that when I fall short, Delita, is that I'm going to go back fishing. And when I go back fishing, because I have influence over others, I ultimately cause others to go backwards as well because my righteousness can't get me anywhere. So for Peter, Jesus is telling him that I have called you, remember, to be a fisher of men. I've called you out of this old way of doing things. I've called you out of this old lifestyle. Peter, I need for you to tend to my flock. For you and I, it, 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 it equally applies that for us, that the Lord is telling us to get back to doing what it is that I have called you to do. If on the condition you say that you love me, then come out of your old ways of thinking. If, if in fact you love me more than these. If, in fact, that you think that you're my Superman disciple, that you're going to outwork everybody, then actually, here's what you do, the greatest amongst you, then why don't you come and be the greatest servant amongst the brothers, if, if you're great. If, if, if you want to be great in the kingdom, then be the greatest servant. If, if in fact, that you love me, is, 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 is what he says. And I got these three little short notes and we can go eat. 
In order to follow Jesus, we, you, I, me, us, we need to settle some unresolved issues that we have in our heart. I'll, I'll say it again, because half y'all to tune me out. If in fact we are to be effective followers of Jesus, all of us need to do the work and settle some unresolved issues that we have in our heart. Because the issue ain't with Jesus and us, the issue is us with him. God don't have an issue with us. We have an issue with him. And the longer we continue to act like we don't, the less effective that we're going to be in his kingdom. Until we settle those unresolved issues in our heart, we're going to keep continuing going back to the fishing pond, spending all night fishing just to come up with catching nothing. Until uh, we settle these unresolved issues that we have in our heart, we're going to continue to waste more and more time. Until we settle these unresolved issues in our heart, we're going to cause Jesus to keep coming back to the same place where he found us the last time. Y'all quiet. Um, in order to follow Jesus, um, we need to resolve some unresolved issues. Um, how do we do that? We have to know that Jesus is our resolve. <laughs> Man, I thought I was in church. In order to follow Jesus, we need to resolve some unresolved issues. But also in order to do that, we need to know that Jesus is our resolve to our unres <laughs> unresolved issues. In order to follow Jesus, we need to resolve some unresolved issues in our heart. But in order to do that, we need to recognize that Jesus is the resolve to our unresolved issues in our heart. Almost there. I'll try it one more time. I think, I think that was good for practice. Um, in order to follow Jesus effectively, we need to resolve some unresolved issues in our heart. But in order to settle some unresolved issues in our heart, we need to know that Jesus is the resolve. Going back to your old way of doing things, to your old way of living, to your old habits of thinking, to your old friends, old places, ideas, does not give you resolve. It, it, it just gives you overnight fishing with no catch. Jesus is our resolve for all denials and shortcomings. I said I had three. That was two, I think. She says, no, in order to follow Jesus, we need to resolve our unresolved issues, one. Two is Jesus is our resolve for all of those unresolved issues. That's two. Three. And then we get out of here. If, in fact, we truly love him, we can settle our issues and get back to the work that he has called us to do. Let me, let me see if this makes sense. That in order to follow Jesus, we need to resolve some unresolved issues. And in order to do that, we need to resolve or conclude on the matter that Jesus is the resolve for our unresolved issues. And if we truly love him, we can settle our unresolved issues by allowing him to be the resolve. And then in turn, what happens is that we can get back to the work. Let's put a definite article in front of that. 
There's only one work that we should be doing. Now, if you say get back to any work or a work, that could cause you to, that might mean that you're back fishing, but no, there's only one work that he's called us to do, and that is to be his witnesses. As we'll discuss next week, as we cover the Great Commission before Jesus ascends, he tells the disciples that you are to go out and make disciples. It's another way of saying that you are to go out and populate the earth. It's the same command that he gave mankind in Genesis, that you are to fulfill the earth. We too are to have those reproductive qualities that we are to populate the earth with other disciples. But you can't make other disciples if in fact you're still having and dealing with or not dealing with your unresolved issues because all you do is duplicate someone of yourself. Ouch. We inherently uh, get some of our traits from our parents. <laughs> all of the good stuff, all of the okay stuff, but we get all of the bad stuff from them too. And when we go out, because this word disciple is not just exclusive to the body of Christ, disciple just means a learner, a student of, a follower, and when we go out and we falsely testify about Jesus, what do you mean by that? Meaning that when we go out and we talk a good word to people, but, but, but we don't live it, uh, our, our, our lifestyle and our words combine and make whole who we are. So when we go out and we give false testimony to people and they see how we act, all we do is tell them that you can say that you're a Christian, but you can live any kind of way. Therefore, we end up with a group of followers that repeat the same thing. And that's now all we see in this world that we call media. We see and hear people saying something, they call on the name of Jesus, but their actions and lifestyles are completely different, so much so that they've mixed and combined the two, that their theology is all file, because you can just say and do anything, but where did that come from? It came from the false testimony. It came from those of us who went back fishing when Jesus has called us out of that lifestyle. And this is where we are today. If we just want to know what was going on, because see, we celebrate, we, 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 we fill churches, we buy new outfits for Resurrection Sunday. I grew up, I, I didn't go to church, but I had a new outfit every year that I only wore that day. And likewise, we similarly do the same thing in our churches. We yell out, he is risen. But if he is risen, that means that we too have risen. And the real question is, are you living a resurrected life? Because if we're baptized in his death, that means that our old way of living is in the ground. But like we're baptized in his death, we're baptized in his resurrection as well. And every time we act like Peter, and go back fishing, what we're doing is we're returning to dead things. But the Lord has a greater purpose for all of us that from this day forward, we are to live a resurrected life. There's a higher quality of living. And the question is, Peter, the lighthouse on the church, Pike Church, is do you love me more than you love? Do you love life more than you love death? Because Jesus left all of our sins. He left all of the sins for those who were there during his time. He left those in the grave. And he tells Mary, don't touch me. Not yet. 
For I have not ascended to the Father. I have not presented this new self to him yet. And you and I has now have access that we can walk in that same liberty of newness. That we too should not be so quick to let everything touch us. We shouldn't be so quick to touch everything. For we too have not ascended to the Father yet. But we voluntarily go fishing and we defile ourselves and Jesus has to come and clean us over and over and over and over again. He tells Peter these two words. Follow me. And that there is where I want to conclude today that the Lord is speaking to me, he's speaking to you, he's speaking to us with these same words that he told Peter with his first encounter, he told Peter to follow me. He told us, he tells us on our first encounter with him, that's the call for no man can come to the son unless the father draws him. The same word then is the same word now that the Lord is telling his people to follow me. Notice Jesus' conversation is not with what Peter and the guys would call a Gentile. Notice this conversation is not with someone who was deemed as Jesus' enemy. This conversation is being had with one of his very own disciples. And the Lord is telling us this morning, if you love me more than these things, these could be whatever it is for you. I know what it is for me. He says, follow me. Y'all looking at me. I'm going to ask you to do something silly, and then I'm going to take them in my seat. Just right where you sit, right in your aisle. Don't worry about who's here, who's not. Just close your eyes. Silly task. And while your eyes is closed, don't worry about it. We got somebody watching the door. Ain't nobody going to come in behind you. Why don't you just lift your hands? Now, y'all did it because I asked you to do. Thank you. But while you're in that posture of lifting your hands, why don't you do something that we can't see? Why don't you lift your heart? You lifting your hands is a position of surrender. And the Lord right here, right now, is asking us all to surrender our hearts. I'm going to give you a second or two. Don't worry about who's here. And the question goes out this morning to each one of us, just like it did to Peter. Do you love me? Not me, but him. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Let that question ring as many times as you've fallen short. You know. Do you love me? Give him an answer. Do you love me? If your answer is yes, he has two words for you. That's follow me. Blessed Savior, I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender. Surrender right where you're at.
find in the scriptures as we read, he asks us questions. I don't know that the questions are so much for him as they are for us. Um, and Jesus is asking Peter as he has asked us, do you love me? And I think we could summarize his answer by, if you love me, then show me, right? Show me, don't just tell me you love me. Show me, show me as I have shown you, right? On the cross by giving my life. And Pastor G just said, you know, we can't love life more than we love death. Death to ourselves, right? Not, not necessarily death in the grave. We know that that's a scary thing, but the least we can do is sacrifice ourselves, our desires, our wants, our needs, die to them for the sake of the cross because what's on the other side of death is life. Life eternally, life abundantly, life the way that God wants for us. So do you love me? Show me. So let us show him today. Let us show him this week in our actions, in our thoughts, in our prayers. And for those who, you know, maybe you don't have that relationship, so maybe you don't feel like Christ is asking you those questions. But for any person here or online who does not know that love, who wants to come to know that love, experience that love, understand that sacrifice, we want to invite you to take part in the salvation, to be part of this body of Christ. So I don't know if there's anyone here. I want to ask you to stand or I want to ask you to raise your hand. But if you don't know the Lord, I just want you to repeat this after me. And this is from the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10 says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes and is justified. With the mouth, one confesses and saves is saved so all you need to do is just say that Jesus is Lord and if you made that confession today congratulations you are now part of the body of Christ amen amen in addition to salvation you know that's just part of the process that's that's day one the sanctification is that work, right? That work of following Christ. That's, that's that part. But you can't do that alone. You need a body of believers. You need people who care about you, who love you, who are willing to walk with you and alongside you. And I think this is a great group of people to do that with. Amen? The Lord created us for community. We are a good community. We cook for each other. We love on each other. You know, we love this church because we love one another and we love Christ. So if you are interested and you're looking for a church home, we invite you to come. You can raise your hand. You can stand up. You can come stand up with me. Um, or if you're watching online, you can just drop that in the, in the comment or reach out to us at info at the lighthouse on the pike org. Is there anyone here who would like to join the Lighthouse on the Pike church who is not already a member of this great body? Amen. Amen. Well, we'll be here same place, same time next week if you change your mind. Amen. Amen. So a couple of announcements just to shift gears a little bit before we close out. The Lighthouse ladies, we had a good time, didn't we, um, the First Lady, yesterday. Praise God. Praise God. You know, we're so blessed just to have First Lady Nate. She brought forth an amazing word yesterday um, out of John verse 21. We were teaching and just enjoying just the time together. So thank you for all those who came. Um, we have our next event. Our next event is May 18th. May 18th, mark your calendars. Um, we have a QR code on the back and the flyer in the back. You can use that same code um, to RSVP for our next upcoming events. So be on the lookout for more information regarding that. And as Pastor G said today after church over in the, um, in our, um, what is that, the classroom, sorry, the classroom, 
that is where we're going to partake in a taste of the Bible. We are so excited about that. Amen. So thank you to Sheldon, Travis. They're getting ready. So let's let's honor our brothers who have just dedicated so much time and resources um, to making that a great event. So let's just be there and head on over after church. Um, a couple of other events, April 20th, April 20th is the Grace Cathedral Marriage Workshop. Amen. Amen. God honors marriage. Um, and so if you are interested in attending this workshop, it'll be in Capitol Heights, Maryland from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, April 20th. Um, if you'd like to RSVP or you need more information, you can find Megan, Pastor G, myself, Sheldon, Jason, any of us. Um, the nursing home, we continue to serve at the nursing home uh, on Sundays, um, every fourth Sunday, I believe, and April 28th will be the next date that we have that. So come out and um, serve, 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 amen. Two more things, two more things. Um, Bible study, Bible study, Bible study. Every Thursday at 7 o'clock, we are blessed by a time of teaching and learning. Again, we can't grow if we don't know. <laughs> we need to know the word of God in order to grow. Okay, you're going to have to use that. Pastor G is going to use that. You can't know. <laughs> you can't grow if you don't know. Amen. So please join us at 7 o'clock in the classroom every Thursday. Um, and the last thing, um, tithes and offerings, you know, you know, we're not necessarily a church who is always preaching on tithes and things like that. We did a great um, series on tithing. If you want to understand sort of the biblical context as to why we tithe and why we give. Um, but it's scriptural. It's scriptural. It supports this ministry. It supports the community. So we just thank you for your continued giving. But if you want to give today, there's some QR codes for those who are here uh, on the pews. Um, we have in-person options as well. You'll notice um, there's some options in the front and in the back, um, the boxes. Um, we're also online, the thelighthouseonthepike.org. Just click the giving tab, and we're also on cash app, dollar sign, the lighthouse on the pike. You can do snail mail. We are here. We receive old school mail um, at 5904 Marlboro Pike, District Heights, Maryland. And I think that's it. Anything else, Pastor G? Okay, let's stand. Let's stand as we um, prepare to get dismissed. I'm just going to ask you to just lift your hands as we um, say this and listen and say this together. Um, now unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and forever. May God's people say amen, amen, amen. amen.